Welcome to the Fully Ramblomatic Game Awards. Basically exactly the same as the regular Game Awards, except for two crucial details. One, we prioritise awarding things and not sucking off corporate industry so hard that its legs recede into its stomach cavity. And two, our award categories actually fucking mean something. I mean, come on. Best Action Adventure might as well have an award for Best Game with a Title Screen. Categorising based on genres a flawed practice, anyway. What you should do is categorise based on what feelings the games bring out in you. Best Game that made us excited. Best Game that made us scared. Best Game that made us haunted by our own capacity for violence in a zero consequence environment. Well in that spirit, here's my top 5 games from 2023 that made me happy, my top 5 games that made me mad, and my top 5 games that were as stimulating as taking my grandparents to a general anaesthetic tasting party. Kicking off with my fifth favourite game of 2023, Dredge, an understated horror post-dad game about scouring every inch of a dreary ocean to draw up the few commodities within that are either valuable or at the very least make for interesting conversation. And maybe it spoke to me so much because it's such a wonderful analogy for my own job. Although I don't usually have to carefully navigate choppy waters to avoid being speared by merciless tentacles. Only when talking about Hogwarts Legacy. <laughs> What better illustration for the perils of overexposing even the greatest IP than Star Wars, when you can take a property full of space battles, laser sword fights and implied sister fucking, and reach the point that its new entries provoke reactions like, oh god not this again, you know you might have overdone it a tad. Jedi Survivor is my fifth blandest game of 2023. So what are you gonna try now, Star Wars? If it were me, I'd lean harder on the sister fucking. <laughs> It was heartening this year to see general audiences turning against live service gear grind design, and more towards the artfully designed single player experiences like Baldur's Gate 3, which isn't getting any prizes from me because it won TGA Game of the Year and I don't want it getting too smug. In a way I'm grateful to Redfall for being one of the early signs of this positive shift in the wind. Thanks Redfall, now get out of here you fucking suck. <laughs> I'm still one of those deviants who likes horror games in months other than October, and it would be remiss of me not to award the one game that actually scared the piss out of my jaded arse. Please don't ask what piss was doing in my arse. Amnesia the Bunker achieves this with its innovative approach to organic recursive gameplay. Threatening my protagonist with death or injury is one thing, but threatening to erase my last hour of progress? Truly traumatising for anyone who works with regular deadlines. <laughs> Obviously any game with a protagonist named Clive has no business in anything but the bland list, but that's underselling Final Fantasy XVI's real achievement in mediocrity. Finally committing to real-time hack and slash combat did little to distract from its utterly pedestrian plot, livened up only by its ambition to rip off Game of Thrones at every turn, while forgetting the one ingredient that made Game of Thrones worth watching – sex scenes with visible nipples. <laughs> I will reiterate that I have no interest in the actual gameplay mechanics of fighting games and so cannot judge Mortal Kombat 1 on that level, but even if every blitzed out EVO competitor raised a vibrating thumb in its support, that would not justify its existence to me. Not with its tedious character roster and story campaign not even on the hilarious side of terrible anymore. Its only real purpose seems to be to earn money flogging poor impersonations of TV supervillains who were popular memes about two years ago. <laughs> I'm still a little iffy about awarding a game still in early access, whose entire buttocks could fall off at any moment with a bad update, but you know what, with its innovative procedural design and detective mechanics, Shadows of Doubt was the first of the only three games this year that actually made me excited. Good excited, I mean, not Monkey Man at the start of 2001 A Space Odyssey, learning how to hit things with a stick and immediately channeling Phil Collins excited. <laughs> Boy, the conversation around Hogwarts Legacy really helped me appreciate new perspectives and expand my world view. Now I know how the mute function works on Twitter. And after all that, what a waste of energy that it was all in service of such a dull fucking game. What missed potential to give us a flying broomstick and then a world as boring as that to explore it with. That's like getting your car serviced so you can use it to drive around Emeryville. <laughs> You may have already guessed that these awards are for all the games I've reviewed, regardless of what label they were reviewed under, and you may recall at one point under the previous label I panned a game that I wasn't allowed to identify, because the pricks moved the embargo just before the video came out. But embargo's long over now, so I can finally admit that it was Hellboy Web of Weird. Thanks for playing this brief round of what all media will be like the moment American democracy drops the pretense and elects a corporation as president.
a late entry to my top five list. Talos Principle 2 took everything that made the first game engaging and pumped it up like a Sonic the Hedgehog character on an obscure fetish site. Some might say it's a rather heavy-handed Philosophy 101 experience, slathered like chunky marmalade over gameplay that's just a string of puzzles, but guess what? I like puzzles. That little piano ditty you get when you finish a crossword on the New York Times app? That's what I hear in my head when I come. <laughs> as late as a late entry can possibly get, Avatar handily takes the crown of inevitable Ubisoft sandbox bland game winner from previous frontrunner Assassin's Creed Mirage for similar reasons to Jedi Survivor's presence, in that it set out to make a game about playing a big blue cat exploring a vast alien botanical garden while blitzed out on ketamine, and the results somehow still found a way to bore off all six of my nipples. <laughs> It shouldn't be controversial to say that a game's protagonist can make a significant impact on its appeal, it's the person we're stuck with the whole way, after all. Had Forspoken's main character, for example, not been a smug, insufferable, whiny asshole, who with every dialogue demonstrated how much they deserved to be impaled mouth to butthole on an unfinished wooden fence post, then the game might have aspired to being merely boring and ugly. <laughs> But when it comes to the good games of 2023, apparently they all should have stopped trying in February, because that's when Hi-Fi Rush came out and it just wasn't topped for me. It's bright and colourful and innovative and funny and stimulating and finish in a reasonable amount of time, and in brief, feels like you're playing a really good third party game on the PS2. Do more of this, games industry. Remind me more about how it was before you made everything go to shit. <laughs> Skyrim in space. Any pitch that can inside three words make a game conference audience seating area ankle deep in excited piss should have been a slam dunk, but no. Bethesda's sci-fi yawn fest must inevitably take the top spot. I guess they were counting on the modders to liven it up? But those lads have given up on it already, I hear. Guess there's only so much appeal in riding around on your favourite My Little Pony when all you have is a thousand planets of bugger all to do it in. <laughs> I vacillated for a while on what order to put my top two worst games. Forspoken functions, yeah, but Gollum is at least aware of the loathsomeness of its protagonist and is more to the point mercifully brief, but at the end of the day there's no overlooking what a gigantic fucking mess Gollum is. It's like comparing a broken down car to a pile of disembodied panda guts. I can't in good conscience pretend I'd prefer to keep the panda guts around, just because it's cheaper than buying tinsel for the Christmas tree. And with that we've hammered the last nail into the coffin of 2023, ready for next week's roundup of games I didn't review to finally shove it off the cliff onto the jagged rocks below, but it's important at this time to remember the poor and unfortunate content creators of the world. As we begin our first official year, don't forget Second Wind is entirely independently funded and we rely on the support of viewers like you to keep going. So if you've got a moment and these weekly videos bring even a little much needed sunshine into your horrible life, jog along to our Patreon page and see if any of the subscription bonuses tickle your clitoris. Yeah, I know donation drives are a bore, but all the good wishes in the world won't get us past the budget section of your mum's blowjob catalogue. <laughs>